those tomatoes like they were children. He's proud of those tomatoes. His pride and joy. He's out there right now covering them up with tarp. He said he had to protect them from the storm. Well, why? Well, if I know, I've never heard of protecting a plant from the rain. Is he drunk? He said his leg was hurting him earlier. It's probably one of those days. As he had. Is it safe for him to be out there? You're, you try telling him not to, especially if he's out of view. That man would jump off a roof if he got into his head that he should. Let those people run off. He's out of view now. Just a second. I'll check the trash. Don't lose them all. What? I'm worried about him. He said more than a couple of them. Pain must be really bad. I don't understand it really. How someone's like I'm not a doctor. Call Phantom Bay. I know what it's called, Kelly. I've been to all his appointments. It must be a bad one. He's five years in already. Is five normal? Only on the really bad days. He's been doing better since you came home, I think. He's just happy to have you around. What's different about today? It's probably the weather. We haven't had a storm like this in all year, so I think it just hit him hard. accident or the pain the accident no no we don't talk about it one of his co-workers came by to visit him last week and your dad wouldn't even come downstairs to talk to him he shouldn't talk to someone about it his doctor told me he should see a therapist but he might have ptsd you can imagine how well it went over with your dad he didn't go hell no his pride's been hurt enough he isn't going to see a therapist see them, he'd come down off his high horse. Not so. There's no talking to him into it. You can try. By the way, how'd the interview go? The one your dad set up for you. It went okay, I guess. Just okay. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. What does that mean? I got a weird vibe. What? Like a creepy vibe? Or standoffish, really? they think you were qualified, but I doubt they really care. I'm talking about everything that went down with your dad. It's a disability claim. Maybe it has been processing for a while now. Could be they're holding things up. You could have made more money from just suing them, and it'd probably go more quickly. Dad would never. No, he wouldn't. He's been friends with Hank since high school, but needs to look at what's happening to his family. I could call him back. It's just temporary, though. You swear? I swear. I'm going to hold you to that. I know you've always hated it there, Mom. More than I ever did. I don't hate it here. Ha, huh, don't even try to lie. It's why you left in the first place. This place just managed to get its hooks back into you. It wasn't really a choice. I'm sorry, Kelly. I really am. Now promise me. Promise me you'll get the hell out of this state as soon as you can. I promise. Thank you. I'm going to hold you to that now. Now where the hell did your father get to? I thought I heard him come in a minute ago. How would you know? Just a second. I'm going to go look for him. Okay. David! Hello. David! Mom, why are you yelling? I'm looking for your dad. Have you seen him? What? What do you mean? I'm not home. He's upstairs. He's covered in mud. Are you mad at him? No, honey, I'm not mad at him. What's he doing up there? Are you mad because he got mud on the carpet? He what? Oh, Jesus. What was he thinking? You only say that when you're mad. He's taking a shower. Okay, you're right. I'm mad now. Would you be mad at me? That depends. Don't do it. We don't have to find out. <laughs> I wasn't going to. Who are you talking to? Your sister. Do you want to talk to her? <laughs> no, there's a tornado watch. I'm going to watch the news. Your brothers. Are you sure? Yes. Someone needs to watch the news, just in case. Where's Kelly? She'd be somewhere with the basement. She's somewhere with the basement. She's on her way home. 
technology should drive fast, but not too fast. Getting a car wreck would be bad too. Not as bad as a tornado, but still very bad. Why don't you tell her? I'm going to watch the news. Someone needs to watch the news. If you say so, Ben, keep me updated. Did you catch all that? Yeah. Ben still yelling at me to tell you to drive faster. the stairs, where I stole my, I'm not cleaning this up, he can do it himself, it could set it anyway, I'll let you clean it then, <laughs> oh, I think dad's got it, oh. typical water spills, right, so how is Ben doing, oh, you know, how he gets when it storms, he's been talking about how it wasn't in the forecast, when he hasn't been locked up in his room, what was he doing in there? Riding, I think. That's all he seems to do lately. You sure that's all he was doing? Oh, Kelly, your brother's not. He doesn't care about that sort of thing. I don't really want to talk about this. Oh, thank God. Neither do I. So, he was riding all day. Yes, that is all he was doing. All day. Just riding. Nothing else. What was he riding? It's been good for him. He's been focused like I haven't seen him in a long time. Usually he'll focus on something really intensely for a little bit. But he gets frustrated with it so easily and gets so aimless. Like with the guitar. He was so into that when he lived here. But once we were gone, he stopped caring about pretty much everything. He's not playing anymore. No, he stopped maybe a month after he left for school. He didn't really have anything to focus on after that. It was even worse after we pulled him out of school until he picked up riding last winter. It's been a blessing. Wow. How did I not know that? No, he stopped maybe a month after he left for school. He didn't really have anything to focus on after that. It was even worse after we pulled him out of school until he picked riding last winter. Well, guess you didn't ask or I haven't really paid that much attention. I found this guitar pick. Yeah. I was going to give it to him. I could still try to. I just sort of figure it needs to lead to it. You were really out of touch there for a while, Kelly. Lots of alcohol when you do that. Wait, where's your father? David, what the hell are you doing out there? I told you I was covering my tomatoes. The storm's a bad one. I'd want them to get beat up. I never heard of anyone doing that, David. smart thing to do. Drag mud all over the carpet, too. Look at that. I'll clean it up, sorry. Dad, you said a bad word. I didn't say it, though. <laughs> Mom, you're not allowed to say that. If I'm not allowed to say it, he's not allowed to say it. Sorry, bud, you're right. I'll put a dollar in the jar. At $27, I get to buy a game when it's $50. That's what he said. That's the deal. Pretty interesting uh, deal to have on there. Sometimes I wonder if you do that on purpose. I'll never tell. Who was on the phone? It's your daughter. That's so. Where is the girl? Here, you talk to her. I'm done playing go between. Don't you want me to clean this up? Just take the phone. Yes, darling. 
right. I don't want to see it like that. Like what? All falling down. The last thing that happened to my parents, you know? I don't want to. I don't want to remember it like that. Not on the ground. That's deep for you. What can I say? The storm has me falling real deep. Ah, this lake. Been here at that time. No, ma'am. Better watch it, though. He's in one of his moods. He's in two moods that time. Worse than usual. His news just been all over the place lately. I reckon it's probably just so much change. Let's get my job back at my lake. Blowing him out of school. And he coming home after, well, after all that. Is he still saying Dr. Patterson? Oh no, that was a, uh, what did he call it? Incident. Uh, yeah, apparently, this is according to Ben. Dr. Patterson was talking to him like he was crazy and dumb. And so Ben, uh, lashed out. He hit him. No, no. He sent a letter. A letter? Yeah. To the Department of Health and Human Services. He did it. Sure he did. Wrote that Dr. Patterson was unfit for his career and should have his assistant's license revoked. Oh my god. He knows to say he decided to find Ben a new specialist. Did you find one for him? We did, but she's all the way in Omaha. Before I was there, I'm back, and your mom has him at the time. Why can't you take him? We lost him a driving leg, remember? Use the other leg. You can try driving with just your left foot. You can't be that hard. Let well, you try it first. Ah, oh, this leg. Just talking about it, and it's me out. You're taking anything for it? No pavements. Anything else? A drink now and then helps. Whatever helps you, it does. You can't be serious. What do you mean, dead serious? I know, I know, it just sucks. It is what it is. Let's talk about something else, okay? Okay. So, uh, what are you up to, bro? My parents' house. I just wanted to see it. Feel nostalgic. these two holes punched in it. Like it was some kind of necklace. Now that you say that, yeah. Huh. That's odd. You're the only person who I knew ever played. I guess Ben isn't anymore. Not anymore, no. I might try to get back into it, though. It's right, it probably will keep him occupied forever. Maybe I'll try. I tried to get him to garden with me. That didn't go so well. What was it he said? I could buy a tomato from the store, or wait six months if I want a tomato. He has a point. Sure, but he's also missing the boy Gartner. The feeling of getting your hands dirty of watching something grow and being able to say you've played ball. What? Like children? Not soft, Mark. Maybe you should try it more. What about those plants? What about... What were you doing out in the rain? I was covering up the tomatoes. What? Why? Sure it does. A storm like this can get some nasty wind. Hell, take the tomatoes right off their boots and their mouth. That happens, next thing you know, they'll rot off the vine. Guess that makes sense. See, I was down your old man. I may be a bit of a fool, but this process to it all. You say so, Dad. Tell all you want, it's the truth. Oh, hey, Ben. The meteorologist said that they've been that there have been little cloud sightings in the country, in the county. <clears throat> the meteorologist said that there have been some funnel cloud sightings in the county. Kelly needs to get home. Is she driving fast enough? Why don't you ask her? I need to keep watching. Tell her she should drive fast enough. You got him, bud. Ben's getting worried. Are you making good time? I think so. By the high school. Ben's getting Still got ways to go, then. Don't be reckless. But you have to be cheeks. The storm could get nasty. I'll get there when I get there. I'm booking it. I'm booking it. As long as you're being safe. So what happened to the 
those ones. She said you were right, didn't she? She did, and I am. Oh. Oh, don't give me that look. What look? That one. That one right there. David, you're imagining things. Why are you fighting? We're not. I was going into the living room to watch the news. Come on. Okay. The show of funnel clouds a few miles. Kelly, you know the look I'm talking about, don't you? That, that glare. You do know it, don't you? I know it. See, I'm not crazy. About what we were talking here earlier. Here we go again. I'm only worried. Are those the tornado sounds? I can hear them too. A tornado is showing it on the news. Okay, Ben, you know the drill. Downstairs. I want to watch it on the news. Benjamin, now! Most tornadoes only stay on the ground for a few minutes and travel less than 10 miles. This one is 12 miles away. Ben, now! Hey, I'm gonna let you go, okay? Is it near me? No, it's east of the air. You'll be fine. Guys, be safe. We will. I'll see. Don't you dare let her off that boat, David. She needs to pay attention to the road. No, I'm hanging up. I can hell you ah. Keep her on that boat. I was not getting sucked up into a tornado before I have to sit around and just worry about it. There would be so much to breathe that boat would be destroyed before you could hear her get sucked into the tornado. Also, you have to put two dollars in the jar. She could get in a wreck, especially with this wind. Probably be able to, yeah, or get in a wreck. Unless the phone got thrown from the car or was so crushed. Okay, bud, enough of that. Go and take, give your mother a heart attack. Ask her if she can see anything. Chris, Noah, here, you ask her. Talk to your mother, Kelly. Okay. Kelly, can you see anything out there? Just rain. No hell. No, just rain. Was east of here. Kelly went to Grandpa's house. She's northwest of here. She wouldn't see a tornado unless there was another one, which is very possible. I just wanted to make sure of Ben. Kelly gets sucked into a tornado or gets in a car wreck. Can I have her computer? Benjamin. Not the appropriate time to ask her that if I say so. She won't need it. She's not using it. No one will be it would be fair if I couldn't have it. Okay, bud. I think that's fair. Kelly gets sucked into a tornado. I'm sure she'll be okay with me now have a computer. What about her room? Please, Ben, that's enough. I'll tell you what. We'll leave her room on the table. You never know. Get some more damage here in her room. I have a giant hole in the ceiling. If I were you, I'd wait and see that on the investment. Alright, that's a good point. Your brother sometimes. God bless him. Let me talk to him. Sure about that? Yeah. Okay. You asked me. Ben, you have to talk to your sister. I don't want to. Wow. You can ask her about that computer. Let me have the phone. Dad says I can have your computer if you crash and get shunted into a tornado. I love to you too, Ben. He said I might be able to have your room, but I'm holding off to see if it's more damaged than mine. I have the storm before I come in. That's smart of you. Not dumb, so you shouldn't be surprised. Are you surprised? Not even a bit. You, you shouldn't be surprised. I'm not dumb. No, you're not. Mom and Dad are arguing in the corner. They don't think I can hear them. About me? No. Mom thinks we should be in the storage room. Or on the east side of the house because she says it's further from the ground. Is it? No. One of the walls only half of we covered. She's also afraid that the water heater in the air could explode. If that happens, we'd be killed. Even if we're in the other room, we'd be burned to death. So you guys are in the safest room. We are at least likely to be killed by a tornado around this room. But there's no guarantee in either room. Tornadoes and debris are unpredictable. Sounds like you found this out. It's just common sense. Are you scared? Yes. Anything I can do to help? How? We can just talk. Sure. 
Of course, I'm sure. Why would you think I'm lying? That's not what I meant. But what did you mean? Just, I just know it's hard for you to open up. Dr. Patterson said that if I don't want to talk about something, then I don't have to. I can just write it down. I thought you'd hate that. He was not a good doctor, but I liked what he said sometimes. But not all the time. Not all the time. He thought I was stupid. I'm not stupid. Say that the figure seemed darkened as if the beast leached light from their skin. The 
people of you or of the trove gather to discuss what was to be done. The bees slumbered, but for how long? Why did it sleep? And, perhaps most royally of all, why had it, how had it arrived in their valley? Not a soul had seen its arrival. It was almost as if the thing had suddenly materialized in the center of the village, or some proposed that it had emerged from the earth itself. But if that were the case, how had the soil, their valuable, rich, fair earth, the source of their plenty and their affluence, turned into such a terrible creature? The villagers wailed for their plight. We have done nothing to deserve this, they cried. We should not have to carry this burden. Some are quick to suggest leaving. But where would they go? The villagers decided to stay in their valley. The creature slept. skins into a rolling obsidian briar, but it did not rouse, it did not move, it did not rain air from the skies, nor did it consume children by the score. It slept. The people of you sent envoy to appeal to the miners in the mountain for help. The mountain folk scoffed at the villager near plush furs and gold adornments. Why should we help you? they asked. The beast has come to you, not us. Perhaps we can be convinced. The envoy returned to the village with the miners' demands. They would continue their trade, and perhaps one day the miners would come to their aid. The farmers continued to tend their land. The merchants made their yearly trek up the treacherous trails to collect what little chips of wealth the miners had collected in exchange for the farmer's yield. Year after year, however, there seemed to be a little less. A little less harvest, a little less yellow and blue passed around snowy algos carved from the unforgiving rock, a little less green in the valley, a little less light. This continued for twenty years, until the day it began to rain. The people of you, or the trove, watched the clouds roll in not far from the south, whence the clouds usually arrived, laden with water from a faraway sea, but from the north, where there was but ice and stone. that did not relent, but instead crept into every corner. The mountains themselves seemed to sweat and boil water into the valley. The water carried it with it a quiet rot. The first harvest after the rains began produced a meager crop, and what little could be gathered was black with mold before the merchants had a chance to trade for their yellow and blue. The livestock fared no better. Animals began developing weeping sores that became infected and killed the quick fever. That winter, the people of the trove of you watched one another waste away as they began to starve. The envoy was sent back into the mountains to beg for help once again, but found the words minds deserted. The people of you drew more on their own. The next harvest was worst. Every last crop had turned meal and infested for before midsummer, by the end of the season, the last of their livestock were dead. The people of the trough watched one another descend into a state of hungry madness, devouring the rotten wood, slowing from their homes in slimy heaps and their fine leather belts that once held yellow and blue, now spreading its borders of black mold. The village and its residents were rotting away. A group of villagers approached the beast after the last of their livelihood and perished, walking through the swamp of waste-dye mud to make a plea to the beast. We are sorry if you have ever been offended, mighty creature. We offer you ourselves to you in hopes that our sacrifice will satisfy your hunger. In unison, the villagers submerged themselves into the tarry mud, suffocating in the muck. The beast slept. As the rains from the north continued, to their third year, the few remaining people of the drought began to prophesize about the beast, and come and brought with it great devastation, they could agree. If it had brought the rains from the north, and it had brought a to the village, that would not relent. Squatting in what little remained of their crumbling homes, they dreamt of the day that the beast would be satisfied. When it would wake and leave their valley and allow them to farm the land, they dreamt of the day that the miners would return, bringing with them their purchases. 
I can't tell where you are. Five miles out, maybe. Okay, make sure you... What's that noise? Kelly, I'm going to have to let you go. Why? Uh-oh, silence. Mom? I... There... Eh. Mom, you're breaking up. sit down and have oh no that was the end there's an epilogue we're going to go take a look at real quick though too but we have the credits oh my gosh that is not cool by the way that is not cool that was too much that is too That story is very uh, sad if it ended the way we think it's ending. The way we think it ends is with uh, the house getting taken up by a tornado. That's not what we were expecting. We could probably expect something along those lines if we were really thinking about it though. Yes, we need to get into the epilogue. 100%, yes. We need to see what happens. Is it the aftermath? anything else. There must be more to the story. She wished that she had called back then. So what's our character? We have a new backdrop where we're not driving. Let's just we'll call mom. Don't tell me to give this voicemail. That'd be really sad. Mom, it's me. Me? Who is me? Can't be Kelly. She never calls. Try to be funny, Mom. Funny? Me? No, absolutely not. It's an honest question. Okay, I'm sorry. Your mom's on a call. I was just sorry. Um, I'm really sorry. You're getting there. Mom's. It's... Yeah, it is, isn't it? You too, Mom. What made you finally decide to call? Do I need a reason? I don't think so, but I've come to expect a motive from you. I just wanted to talk, Mom. I believe you. It's just a surprise is all. Are you outside? Sounds like you're a wind tunnel. Yes, I'm waiting for my bus. Your brother told me that you guys were going to be getting a snowstorm. You standing around in that? I'm used to it. I don't think I ever could. But why are you waiting for a bus? Got your car fixed, didn't you? Did, but the road's pretty bad. Taking the bus is better. How? I'd rather do that than drive in it. If I were you, I'd rather risk it my own weak car than wait around for a bus. How much longer are you stuck out there? You should be here by now. What's keeping it? The roads. That's my guess. Which bus are you waiting for? It's the 404. Couldn't take another one. Could have walked, maybe. Get a little bit closer to wherever you're going. Could. They all sort of go in the same direction. But we're thinking about. Don't feel like you have to keep. 
keep waiting in the gold mine, Cal. I do kind of owe it to you. That's sweet of you. You're trying to make me feel better. Stop. But you have three months of unreturned calls to make up for. Don't forget. Let me time stuck and say I'm sorry. Oh, I don't. No, until I'm tired of hearing it. Great. Might let you off the hook if you can explain yourself. I haven't been able to find the time. Really. Not even in a couple of minutes every now and then. I thought we were done with the guilt trip. Okay, well, I'll let it go. Keeping you so busy at work. About that, Kelly. Before you get mad, let me explain. Please do. I quit the coffee shop. Now, we missed the bus. What? <laughs> Don't freak out. I got a new job. Okay, that's good at least. You're right to lead with that next time, okay? Spare me a heart attack. Something happened. No, I just found something better. Oh, that's good. I was expecting something much worse. Here's the new job. Museum. That sounds interesting. What kind of museum is it? The Living Museum. Never heard of that. Neither have I, really. Well, you dress up. You dress up how? I can find here, Toms. No. Yep. Is there a bonnet? Tell me there's a bonnet. There's a bonnet. Please, please send me the picture. Sure thing, it's new. Going to have free it. Fine. I work good in my bonnet. God, I need to laugh. Why is everything okay? I'm fine. I didn't mean anything by that. If you say so. I do say so. Hey, James, you've been able to ask if you can get some time off to come home from the holidays. I haven't asked yet. You were planning on coming home, weren't you? Uh, I'm not sure yet. You're planning on coming down, aren't you? I have one thought about it. You aren't missing another year, Kelly. I won't allow it. I'll drive up there and drag you back to Nebraska by air if I have to. No, no, of course I'll be there. You better stop making a plan. You'll probably have to request time off, won't you? You'll need a plane ticket. You can drive. What about your car? Wait, was it fixed? Crying out loud, Kelly. Make up your mind. I really can't remember. Either way, I don't trust it on the road for such a long drive, but I'd much rather you fly. You probably should fly. Look at that. We agree on something. When do you think you'll be able to fly in? Once the semester is finished up. Yep. When's that going to be? Just a couple more weeks. That's sooner than I thought. My class is going all right. It's been a tough semester. What? My grades are terrible. Yes, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just... Classes I'm taking are difficult. I thought you were looking forward to this semester. You lectured that photography class. You bought that expensive camera and everything. Turns out the teacher hates me. Come on, I'll get it. I'm sure he doesn't hate you. Believe me, she does. Oh, sorry, she. I just assumed. Never mind. What makes you so sure she hates you? She always criticizes my work. And she only does this with your pictures. Sometimes, yeah. Maybe she's trying to push you harder than the others. That doesn't explain my grade. Well, what are you doing wrong? What does she want from you? She wants me to be more experimental. Like Picasso or something. It's actually okay, sure, with Picasso. Keeping it simple, we are. I wouldn't argue. How do you plan to go about being more experimental? I have no idea. You can just fake it. I mean, explain what you're doing is experimental without it being completely true. Good. You don't sound thrilled about the idea. I know I can do what she wants. That's fine, but don't forget the grade. I'm working on it. Good. I hope you have a plan. You and my teacher on Monday. Did you actually do that? No. Probably would have been a good idea. Believe me, I know. What about that final project? The one you showed to me? It has to be great if I'm going to pass. It will be. I have a feeling. Here's hoping. What about the rest of your classes? Is there anything that you can do to help those grades out? What's all the questions, Mom? What about the rest of your classes? Is there anything that you can do to help put those grades out? What's all the questions, Mom? I'm just trying to understand what's going on. I don't think I can save them. 
You can't go through this again, Kelly. So that you would get your grades up so you could graduate. Something else going on. Are you doing okay? I'm fine. Then what's the deal? Guns are just tough. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. Why are you still determined to maintain that version of the story? Because it's the truth. No, it's not. Besides, I thought you didn't want to pretend things were going better than they were. You're right. Don't you want to talk to me about it? I want to listen. I want to help. Okay. Talk to me, Kelly. I want to be here for you. I want to help. I feel like I'm alone. Alone. But I thought you had friends up there. You told me about Anna and Kyle and his boyfriend and Elle. What about Jesse? Jesse and I have our problems. So it turns out this is like a prequel to what happened in our stories of the epilogue. It's a pre-story. I'm just going to let you know what kind of problems. He's been distant. Distant now, like you never see him. No, we've been living together. Ah, oh, this news to me. I haven't wanted to know how long it's been going on. Not that long. We'll have to talk about that little secret another time. What's next to you then? He's never home. From the sound of things, I'm constantly busy. Maybe he has a lot going on too. That's the thing. I don't know. Don't ask. I want a confidence note. I want to know where your boyfriend is isn't being nosy. Who knows what he's getting up to? I don't think he's up to anything. But what do you think is going on? I don't think he's happy. We need to figure out what's going on. I don't get why he's so afraid to talk to him about it. It's complicated, I guess. I can't tell you what to do, but I want you to be happy, and you're not. Something has to change. You're right. So, that's what's been getting to you, or is there more? I don't know. I didn't say it wasn't Kelly. I just want to feel like you can't talk about anything else that's bothering you. That sums it up, honestly. Sure about that. I don't mind listening. I can tell that this is boring you. Problems are usually boring. Besides, you'd have to be boring yourself, wouldn't you? Anyway, it's fine. I understand you're not ready. For what? For whatever it is that you're trying to get out of all of this. I just want to talk to you. You want to let go of whatever it is you've been so determined to hold on to. What would that be? You'd have to tell me. That's your bus. You better get home. I know it only passed us. Oh, that's not my bus. We can all go somewhere. Might be you don't want to get home, but you're supposed to. Why are you talking like that? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a boring. You think I should be? Please, just be clear with me. Get on the bus. I don't want to. Tough. Go. Call me soon, though, please. Okay, okay, well, just be safe. I'll try. Then we hang up. Just like that. that we all live, they're all so different. The love we all share is so different and lovely and great. What a lovely way to end. I did enjoy this story. It was different. It kind of lets you in on the life of someone that it's not your life. There are billions of people on this planet we only know ourselves. We can only think we get to know others, but there's that little tiny bit that we'll never know of everyone else out there. We can only truly know ourselves and our stories, and we can touch on the stories of those close to us. But learning and watching all of this, it's interesting. The life of another is so very So, thank you so much for listening, and I hope that this was relaxing. Hope you enjoyed the first ASMR video, and uh, if you want to see some of the videos that are not ASMR, they'll be here on my on screen to see our Indie Month playlist, where we played a different indie game every day this month.